My name is Jeffrey Cam, and I'm the host of Digital Oil and Gas, the podcast that looks at the impact of digital technology on the oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further, or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Cam on Twitter or at JeffreyCam.com. This podcast is entitled Eight Killer Ways to Apply Analytics in Oil and Gas. Many industries today benefit from applying analytics to their more vexing problems. Oil and gas will follow suit. Analytics are now de rigueur in many industries. Examples include life insurance companies who try to predict customer acceptance of new insurance products, retailers who predict the sales of new outlets, cable companies who try out new cable bundles, and food companies who plan menu choices, such as an all-you-can-eat shrimp dinner special based on the expected availability of key commodities, like shrimp. Alberta's oil and gas sector has all the characteristics to make it an ideal place to apply analytics to its key problems. There's oodles of data to analyze and the volume is perpetually growing. There's lots of variables at play. It takes scarce expertise to do the analysis, and the operations will run for decades. Alberta's oil and gas fields will generate enormous amounts of information for processing. Simply strapping a dozen sensors to a producing well to record volumes, pressures, temperatures, mass, and throughput, just a small number of the possible variables of interest, can generate millions of discrete data measures. Trying to make sense of all this data and relate it to each other, to the time of day, to weather events, to work shifts, and provide real-time guidance to decision makers is only really practical through modern analytics. The prize is attractive too. The costs of downtime or missing production are huge, and the number of very similar assets in the industry means small benefits can scale quickly. In my view, there are eight big categories of performance optimization available by applying analytics to unconventional basins. First is to reduce downtime or business interruption. Oil and gas operations include equipment counts that will number in the tens of thousands, and figuring out which are about to fail so that preventative services can be deployed, is a serious challenge. And it won't be clear-cut what drives failure. Consider downhole pumps. There are thousands installed throughout the oil and gas fields, and many factors could contribute to pump failure, such as the manufacturer, the age of the pump, its runtime, fluid composition, or operating temperature. Servicing pumps just before they fail on a planned basis would be significantly better than dispatching emergency-type services after a failure has occurred. Experience in shale basins in the U.S. suggests predictive analytics can lengthen pump life by more than 25%. Other failure-prone assets include power supplies, turbines, and valves. Weather events, that is, intense storms or fires, can play a serious role in interrupting product flow. Predicting the weather is challenge enough, but analytics could help in predicting the impact of these events on the business, as well as predicting the actions that could best remediate the impact of the events. And finally, an example from mining, where safety analytics is used to predict which cruise shifts are most likely to experience a safety incident. And by the way, it turns out that it's 24 to 34-year-old males with newborn kids who are a bit sleep-deprived. In Africa, it's workers returning from Christmas holidays who have partied a little too hard. Safety analytics can help improve safety performance by helping to target appropriate interventions. Number two is to manage social license. Alberta's oil and gas industry has its share of spirited and well-organized opposition. These social movements are almost exclusively reliant on digital social media to self-organize, coordinate, and mobilize, which means they meet the criteria for analytics. Lots of data, growing over time, etc. I suspect the oil and gas industry monitors social media today, but the mounting opposition to pipelines certainly suggests that there's room to improve that analysis. Consumer-facing businesses are far more adept at understanding their customer base and use analytics for that purpose. Ways analytics help manage social license include predicting where social movements are mobilizing, identifying the role played by various forces, such as schools, social groups, and activists, improving the quality and impact of communications with stakeholders, and improving the ability to attract and retain a workforce that is more responsive to social license issues. Third use of analytics is to improve overall performance. There's no shortage of good ideas that the industry could chase to improve its performance. But which ones? And which will have the best overall impact on the business? 
The oil and gas industry tends to look for the small number of big ideas that will make the most difference as quickly as possible. Analytics can help there, but pure digital companies such as Google use analytics to test and refine hundreds of tiny changes rather than creating an internal competition to chase after scarce capital for a few big ideas. I suspect analytics could be more profitably deployed in oil and gas to predict how small changes can add up to big impacts given the long-term nature of the industry, that is, drilling thousands of similar wells, for example. Other ways to use analytics include optimizing the order of doing things, like well delivery, to minimize unnecessary moves, reduce mobilization and demobilization costs, and handling of consumables, like pipe, water, and gravel. Consumer goods companies use analytics to help optimize driving patterns and routes, whereas airlines like FedEx use analytics to optimize flight fuel performance and flight planning, a concept that should readily apply to the oil sands industry with its trucks and vast geography. If the broader industry, perhaps with some government encouragement, were to share its GPS data, truckloads, delivered weights, and storage depots, the industry could optimize the locations for laydown yards, quarries, and ponds to minimize drive times. Number four is to optimize the resource. Finding the sweet spot for a well, and just as importantly, avoiding poor quality spots, is a job for analytics. The experience in the Powder River Basin in the U.S., which drilled thousands of gas wells, really illustrates the power of in-the-moment analytics. Independent analysis shows that the basin drilled too many dud wells that either produced no gas or worse, just water, and that a superior selection of well sites using just a few data variables could have saved the industry billions in value. Kaggle is one solution that U.S. shale players are using to analyze well site selection. Drilling just the right number of wells can save hundreds of millions in avoided well costs. Number five is to accelerate value delivery. The sheer number of wells the industry delivers, shale wells, steam injection wells, means that small incremental time improvements translate to big savings. If a well can be drilled 30 minutes faster, there's a savings in costs from rig rentals, labor hire, and so on, times the number of wells to be drilled. If wells can be brought online faster, the resource is converted into value quicker, which can dramatically improve company economics. The number of wells, their specific performance attributes, the features of the geology, all lead to the application of analytics to support decisions. Number six is to reduce the amount of capital deployed. The oil and gas industry is very capital intense, with a huge range of costly items, and it's not always clear how to optimize those assets. For example, how much inventory of specific items, such as pumps, should be held in inventory, and where in the geography to keep repair times minimized. The size and scale of installed assets, with their varying levels of operating performance, will make predicting the performance of those assets very difficult without robust tools. Should the capacity of an asset be expanded? Should an asset be abandoned? In my experience, when asset performance is hard to understand, the easiest solution is often to simply duplicate the asset. This isn't really an attractive answer in Alberta, with its already high resource cost. A better answer is to model out the industry and its operating performance to predict where bottlenecks are going to appear, where optimization potential can be captured, and where assets can be minimized, downtime minimized, and asset availability maximized. Number seven is to achieve better pricing. From time to time, the oil and gas industry will go through periods of high levels of product availability, such as ramping production as new facilities are put online or during shutdowns, as well as shortages when facilities may be interrupted or not as productive as planned. The better players will be modeling out the industry and its infrastructure to gain a lead on pricing by predicting when shortages or surpluses will appear, the likely shape of the forward pricing curve, and the likely competitor responses. And pricing is not limited to product. Down the road, the industry should be anticipating that carbon, water, power and input fuels, as well as the global commodity trading environment, will all benefit from more thoughtful analytics to understand their behavior in a complex market. The parallel is the financial industry, who use analytics to help predict similar situations involving interest rates and currencies to help develop appropriate trading strategies. And number eight is the management of risks. Last but not least, is the ability of analytics to help manage business risks. 
Analytics could play a role in helping manage financial and compliance risks by identifying and quantifying the risks that play out over multiple assets and timeframes across contracts and sites. Anticipating risks based on fast-moving data and getting remediations in place would help the business avoid downtime, interruptions, unexpected claims, and non-compliance failures. In conclusion, the case for analytics is very powerful in oil and gas and gets stronger over time. I would anticipate the global industry to be big consumers of analytics software and services in the future. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to the show. You can find Digital Oil & Gas on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And please tell a friend about the show. If you have a minute, please leave a review and a rating on iTunes, as that helps others find the show along with other great content. You can follow Jeffrey on Twitter, at Jeffrey Can, or on LinkedIn. Also, look for Jeffrey's new book, entitled Bits, Bites, and Barrels, The Digital Transformation of Oil and Gas, on Amazon and other fine online bookshops. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digital Oil and Gas. The podcast returns next Wednesday, so tune in then.